Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 8 for January the 24th, 2021. We're still in Unit 2, entitled Jesus and Calls in His Ministry. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Standing in the Gap. Our devotion reading is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 7a. Uh, background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 17, uh, verses 14 through 24. And that is our lesson text today. Uh, we'll be studying from John chapter 17, verses uh, 14 through 24. Our key verse reads, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. It's taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 20, from the NIV translation. Uh, our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore Jesus' intercessory prayer for his disciples. <clears throat> Secondly, to long for Jesus' prayer to be answered more fully in your lives and in the church and then thirdly to pray for others and work for unity uh, in the body of Christ we have three outlines today that we will be uh, discussing with you today the first outline is entitled set apart to intercede the second outline is entitled sanctified to intercede and then thirdly um, uh, our outline is shining to intercede. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for yet another opportunity, yet another day of unspeakable mercy and grace that we have received, that we're able to share, continue in God's word uh, as we embark upon a new day. We thank God for each and every one of you. We encourage you now to uh, get your Bible and uh, be prepared to take some notes uh, that we want to share with you today. We have quite a bit of ground that uh, I would like to cover with us today. Uh, we certainly won't be able to uh, do all that is in our heart, but we want to leave you a path, if you will, to, uh, to do your own investigation of Scripture uh, not just to read but just to study uh, God's Word to seek to understand uh, what it what God would have you to learn uh, from his word today and we're going to uh, get into this biblical context I want to read some of this from the uh, our lesson um, uh, quarterly um, it says today's lesson takes place during what is referred to as the upper room discourse. This is uh, comes from John chapter 13 through uh, chapter 16. So we encourage you to read that and the high priestly prayer of Jesus. It is the latter part, the prayer that our lesson uh, lands on today. In the opening section of the prayer, not part of our lesson, Jesus prays for himself, mentioning the things he has done and the time coming for him to be glorified. This is uh, in John chapter 17, verses 1 through 6, and we're actually going to read just a little bit of that before we get into uh, our outlines. It goes on to say, he then turns the prayer toward his... Uh, the disciples praying for their reception of what he has taught uh, that his glory sh uh, stays with them uh, so the world might see it and then for their protection and joy uh, there are some seven petitions uh, if you read all of John chapter 17 uh, verses 1 through 26 we're just uh, dealing with a few of them today, these petitions, if you will, talking about uh, interceding. And we all uh, do that. We all pray. 
uh, for other people. We pray for other situations and circumstances, and, and we are encouraged through Scripture, uh, even as First Timothy chapter 2, <clears throat> uh, verses 1 through 7, uh, would have us to understand. But uh, let, me, let me ask you a question, and then I want to read uh, some of John chapter uh, 17 just a few verses of the opening before we get uh, into our lesson outlines this is this is not um, a part of our lesson text but let me ask you this what or who informs your prayer life what or who informs your prayer life uh, and I hope as we look at Jesus' prayer today uh, in its entirety, and certainly the verses that I'm going to read to you today, we will be able to answer those questions uh, or that question. Uh, our prayers should be informed. Uh, uh, we're going to look, look at Jesus' pattern here. If you have your uh, Bible, uh, turn with me, John chapter 17. And I want to begin at verse 1. <clears throat> Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Verse 4, I have glorified you on the earth, and I have finished the work which you have given to me. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So let's answer that question that I asked you. What or who informs your prayer life? What is the basis uh, of your prayer life? Jesus answered that question for us. Uh, the Father is the who. This is what informs his prayer throughout. And what the what that informs Jesus' prayer petitions is the will of the Father. That's very important. Many times when we are interceding, when we are praying, we are uh, what I would call situational prayers. In other words, we pray because of situations and circumstances. But those situations and circumstances do not uh, uh, override the will of God. Uh, let me help you with that. They do not override the knowledge of God. They do not override the purpose of God. And so as a basis of prayer, we need to at least be seeking out what the Father wants to do and throughout John chapter 17 in this high priestly prayer Jesus keeps he continues to talk about the father he continues to talk about what the father wishes if you continue on with that prayer he talks about the words that he was using to teach his disciples they didn't belong to him uh, he referenced that he gave them the disciples the words that he was given by the Father. It's an exchange. Uh, 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 and, and some of you might recognize the fact that uh, we have been taught over the years to pray uh, God's word back to him. And essentially that is what Jesus is doing. He's giving back what has been given to him. He's giving back his understanding uh, of the will of the Father over the course of his life. He is giving that back to the Father in this prayer. And then he weaves in these petitions that are, are, are surrounding that wheel. I hope this is making sense for us today because we have to uh, 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 make sure that we decrease 
so God can increase. We have to come down, uh, in other words, and what we might want and, and, and lift up what the Father wants. Uh, and we'll demonstrate that uh, in Scripture uh, as we go throughout this lesson. But I want us to keep that in mind that question in mind and think about that question as you read all of John chapter 17 what or who informs your prayer life so let's go uh, a step further and then we're going to quickly move to these outlines but I want you to turn your Bible uh, if you will uh, to Ephesians chapter 1 uh, we're going to read this uh, verse 11 and verse 12 and, and, and everything that I just said to you will uh, uh, be summed up in these two verses here. Not exclusively that there are not other passages but at least for the point that we want to make. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 Paul says in him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So Paul understands this as well. Uh, uh, this is what informs him. He acknowledges the fact that there has been a uh, a, a predestined purpose by God who is working not some things but everything all things after his own wisdom after the counsel uh, 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 of his will right and so uh, uh, we need to understand every prayer that we pray every petition that we lift to God whatever it is whoever it is uh, uh, for it comes up against the will of God, the counsel of God. I hope we understand that. So we, uh, it doesn't matter how saved you are, uh, how long you have been saved, who you are, who you believe you are, it does not override the will of God. It does not override the counsel of his will. God knows everything. He knows the end before the beginning and so Paul understands that 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 him uh, the purpose of him who works everything uh, 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 and as Paul goes on to uh, explain to us in verse 12 it's for his praise and his glory and God's gonna get it in every situation whether we like it or not whether we have prayed or uh, uh, prayed an hour, prayed two hours, prayed four hours for God to change something or to start something or however that may be. I don't want to in discourage you about talking to God about everything because we should and we should be praying interceding for everyone. I just want you to understand that God's will and the counsel of his will is also at play if I can use that term. So let's move and as we think about John chapter 17, uh, Jesus doesn't take his authority and who he is uh, uh, and what he has authority to do. He has uh, uh, authority over all flesh that has been given to him, but he is using it to God's glory. He is saying still what the Father has given him to say. He has taught the things Though he has authority, right, he is using it for God's glory, for God's honor, and for God's praise. And it aligns itself, his petitions, it aligns itself through prayer perfectly, perfectly with the Father's will. Our first outline, taken from John chapter 17, verses 14 through 16, and we're going to get into these petitions here. As I said, there are seven petitions that Jesus lays out in John chapter 17, uh, set apart to intercede. I want to read this from the NIV translation. Jesus is talking. I have given them your word, and the, wor the world has hated them, 
for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Verse 15, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. So the the disciples that Jesus is going to uh, ultimately commission, uh, send them out, if you will, to do or to fulfill the purposes that God has for their lives, he underscores the fact that they are going to go through some things. And, you know, this is something that uh, I think it's noteworthy uh, for us to understand about what we are enjoying now as believers, as being saved. Uh, and so if we think about your, your, our salvation, being believers, what has happened to us, we have been saved from the penalty of sin, right? We have been saved from the penalty of sin through Jesus Christ. Secondly, we have been saved from the power of sin. In other words, we should have overcome the world. This is a reality that we are experiencing every day. Uh, just so we understand, we have been saved. We should have power over, right? That 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 the the world and that that old nature. That's a whole nother discussion. But this is the position that we're in, right? However, our present reality exposes us to the presence of sin by which we need to be kept and in prayer for others. This is where Jesus is. And this is something that has always uh, um, uh, struck me as I read this uh, passage countless times. Uh, uh, Jesus talks about what these disciples, uh, his own, his chosen ones, what they're going to experience. Uh, and this is why we need to be praying uh, 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 for one another because we all are, have been left. Uh, those of us that remain in this world, we still have to go through these things. We'll lay that out further as we go along. But Jesus says here, I have given them your word. I taught them what you told me to teach them and as a result of that teaching and that preaching and that, that, that instruction shaping their lives, they are now experiencing hatred from their environment where they have been left. Some of us may have, uh, and I, I think that we try to escape things that uh, uh, we are not going to be able to escape. Uh, 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 and Jesus specifically ask the father don't remove them from that situation that environment that hatred but keep them why is that important uh, uh, when we think about what we have to do if people are going to be saved and they are going to be saved through our life through our example certainly through the gospel uh, then we have to stay in or stick around, if you will, in the environments that uh, uh, are conducive to hatred, unsavory, unpleasant situations, uncomfortable situations. So Jesus is praying here that the disciples continue to be uncomfortable in the world where they're being left, but they be kept. That's huge. Uh, this is the Father's will for these disciples that they don't leave the world, that they stay in it and continue to this progression, if you will, of teachings that has come from the Father to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave it to his disciples. The disciples have been tagged to uh, share the message, if you will, with the entire world or the environment, even though the world is hating them even though they are disliked even though they will uh, uh, face the same reality as Christ would face uh, that he, they would essentially die right uh, 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 for 
the same cause and purposes uh, or be exposed to death uh, uh, for the duration of the, their time on earth. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody to understand that, that you have been equipped to work in uncomfortable environments. You and I have been empowered. We're going to get to where this uh, 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 affects us as believers. Right now we're dealing with Jesus' own. Jesus is setting the tone with his own disciples of what they are going to have to go through uh, as a result of being taught the things that the Father uh, 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 desired uh, for them to be taught. Uh, they have been specifically chosen for this purpose. So Jesus uh, uh, prays in verse 15. Listen at this. He said, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one as I said earlier you and I have been exposed one of the things that we are hoping and we are praying and we're looking uh, 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 to the hastening of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is for us to be removed from the very presence of sin and evil right we're still dealing with that every day that's the one factor uh, if you will that troubles us the most and we're trying to maneuver our lives even through prayer uh, if you think about some of our prayer requests we sometimes want God to move us to a more comfortable situation but how can you do that how can you move away from uh, 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 through prayer from the situation that Jesus is asking the Father to leave us in think about that so it's clear and what should be clear to these disciples they are not of the world this is why this is happening uh, do you ever think about that when you're under a, a, a satanic attack when you're under uh, 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 some uh, uncomfortable situations that you're dealing with the reason is because you don't belong to this world you are not a part of it and they recognize that right uh, uh, just a little bit of this commentary we're going to move on to the second outline but the Lord's prayer continues as Jesus intercedes on behalf of uh, his disciples there's the Lord's prayer uh, the Lord's model prayer in Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 15 and then uh, Luke chapter 11 verses 2 through 4 so Jesus prays that even as he gave them the word the world was hating them Jesus further explains the reason for the hatred um, as a result of the transforming power of God's word for the word makes us not of this world but more like Jesus who is not of this world but of the heavenly realm so one of the things that I was looking at uh, uh, in our lesson standard concerning this uh, uh, attitude if you will and that we should embrace this uh, 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 from the world knowing the truth about God is a great uh, it's a great blessing right but it comes with a cost although the disciples had not been persecuted directly thus far thus far they were with Jesus on several occasions when his life was in peril, right? So it what we understand about Christ, and if you think about the knowledge that you have, the wisdom, the lifestyle that you're trying to live as a Christian, it comes at a great cost. We are ridiculed, right? We're lied on. We're uh, are talked about if you will we're cheated we're deceived we're undermined and all of these kinds of things but don't take it personal right it's because you don't belong to this world I hope this is encouraging you today and, and, and encouraging you to lift up your head this is a part of the reality of, uh, of, of Christianity this is a part of what Christ was teaching his disciples if you read all of this upper room discourse Jesus specifically tells his disciples what's going to happen to them because they are with him right 
because we are with Christ, because we are believers, because we have accepted the word of God. Uh, uh, you know when the transition took place, that you, when you gave your life to Christ and, and all hell broke loose in your life, maybe in your family, maybe on your job, uh, certainly in your community, and sometimes even in the church house, right? But we have to understand this is a part of the reality of where Christ is bringing us and where he is praying. And this is why we have to pray for people who are going through these things because it is unsettling, right? Particularly for someone that has just given their life to Christ and, and, and has not walked the walk as long as you have walked the walk and talked the talk. Uh, but is starting to see the reality of giving their lives to Christ is causing some friction, right? in their lives and this is all a part of Jesus prayer here uh, that they have been set apart for this they have been set apart to lift others in prayer who are going through the same things we won't have time today but I want you to look at James chapter 1 verse 27 uh, let's get into this second outline sanctified to intercede this is taken from uh, John chapter 17 He's still talking about uh, his own disciples. We haven't got to the other believers, but trust me, we will get there. Uh, John chapter 17, verses 17 through 21. And again, from the uh, uh, NIV translation, Jesus is still talking. Sanctify them by the truth. Set them apart. Your word is truth. Verse 18, as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world for them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified verse 20 my prayer is not for them alone now this is where that petition shifts from his own disciples to other believers this is where you and I come in my prayer is not for them alone but I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one father just as you are in me and I in you uh, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me so there's a lot said here right but Jesus is saying here uh, 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 praying about his own disciples that they have been set apart right for the truth uh, and so Jesus recognized the fact that they are going to follow the same pattern that he did in other words Jesus came into this world right and he is leaving this world Christ has saved these men, taught these men, trained these men, and he's now sending these men to do, to continue the work that he started, right? Because his time was, was limited, right? And so he wants them to continue to be uh, set apart, right? For them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified set apart for what set apart for the purposes of God this is what sanctification is all about and this is a present day reality as Jesus prayer shifts through uh, uh, verse 20 and 21 and, I, and I, I just want you to understand what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life and what he's doing in my life and I recognize this uh, every day God is trimming off some more of the old you. God is removing some of the old, more of the old you and, 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 pl and placing in its place more of Christ, more sanctification. Do you ever realize how uncomfortable you are in the world? Have you ever noticed that uh, how uncomfortable you are in sinful situations do you feel anything do you see anything happening to you uh, as a result of the changes that God has made in your life and has continue continuously making in your life have you noticed a, an, an appetite change in your life if I can phrase it that way 
you don't have a desire for the things that you used to have a desire for, right? That relate to the old nature. This is all a part of the sanctification process. And so as you continue to pray and I continue to pray and we continue to pray, this is what we talked about early on in this lesson uh, 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 under our lesson aims. We were talking about prayer for others and work for unity in the body of Christ. You're not going to get to that unity unless you lose, unless something is trimmed off, right? Unless some of that old is cut off. We, we, we will not align ourselves. Uh, 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 and so this sanctification is relevant. You're going to continue to experience uh, 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 this negative activity from the world and what the world is is telling you if they have not uh, 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 specifically said these words is that we recognize that you don't belong around here right you used to be with us and you don't run with us anymore we recognize some changes perhaps a family member will tell you you know what you are not the same that you used to be. You don't talk differently. Uh, 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 talk the way that you used to. You don't walk the way that you used to. You don't go to the places that 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 you used to go. What happened to you? Well, there has been a great change in your life, right? You have been sanctified even more, right? You have been set apart, and this is what the disciples. Jesus is praying that they understand this, right? Truly sanctified, not for show, right? Not for form or fashion, but to be truly set apart so their life, like Christ, will align itself with the purposes and plan of God and that we will pray that way and that we'll stay that way, and that we'll live that way, and that we'll talk that way. This is what Jesus is talking about here. Do you notice how the Father, if we were to uh, take a trip over to Philippians chapter 2, the, the Father was pleased that Jesus truly was sanctified. He was set apart for the purposes of God. He lived that way and he died that way and he was exalted as a result of it. Right? So we need to understand these things today. These principles are, are, are lifelong for us today. But it, verse 20 is that shift in the petitions uh, from the disciples to those who will believe. And this is why we, you and I have been left in the world as saved individuals in these uncomfortable situations uh, uh, that we find ourselves in is to assist uh, uh, those who will believe we have to teach the same message that Christ taught right in other words we have to teach the salvation plan of Jesus Christ don't flip the script if you will you have to teach the same thing we have to live the same way all of these align themselves with the Father's will Right, And so what Christ wants in, in, in is praying for is not just for his own disciples. He's praying for those who will believe in me through the message. What's the message? Jesus Christ crucified. Should not change that message. And people will be saved and have been saved and will continue to be saved through that message. Right? And, and, and what this does, it, 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 it causes us to be one. How can we have unity in the body of Christ and don't believe the same message? How can we have unity in the body of Christ if we don't agree that we should live holy as unto God? How can we have unity? Right? If we take away from the character of Christ, how can we have unity? And if you look at a, a, a lot of our uh, 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 situations today in the church, they're, they are structured, a lot of them, we have doctrinal problems, right? 
We have theological problems because we don't believe the same things and we're not on the same page and some of us think it, it takes all of that and some of us don't think it takes all of that. We have all of these issues going back and forth and what we're suffering from is a lack of unity in Christ. I don't want you to have unity quote unquote with what, what I said particularly if it's not what Christ said. Our unity has to be surrounded in the message of Jesus Christ, which is surrounded in what the Father taught him to teach. All right? This is all a part of the Great Commission story. Right? And if we are one, this is the hope. Right? And this is the struggle each and every day. That all of them may be one, all of us, Father. Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. There is no greater destructive message that we can give to the world as such that we are not on the same page. Right? Right? That's a destructive concept. It's a counterproductive measure. When the world can see that we don't even agree without, amongst ourselves. That we have issues of, 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 of doctrine where, and, and it doesn't mean we won't, right, have issue or discussion, if you will. But Christ settles the matter. The word of God settles the matter, right? And so the word of God should speak for itself to us. We should be able to see through this prayer here what Christ wanted as opposed to what we want. Right? It matters less what I think and feel and believe I should do. Right? Particularly when it's counterproductive to the word of God. The word of God settles the matter through the message it's not their own message it's the message that they have been given we should not stray away from the doctrine of Jesus Christ we should literally cut straight lines with the scripture and give it in a way where the world can understand how they can be a part of it right don't make the bar so high where the world says you know what I can't reach that you know come down humble yourself humble the message right just give it as the word of God would have it to be understood teach the things that Christ have taught you right and people will be able to understand it you know people will be able to adhere to it people will be able to uh, rely on it because it 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 it, it matches right your lifestyle so we have to be mindful of these things. Question. As we are sanctified and empowered with God, for God, how can we engage other saints of other churches and denominations for the work of Jesus Christ? As I said earlier, we will continue to separate ourselves until we come together under one banner of what the Word of God says. Right? We need to come together in what God said. What does God want us to do? What is his will? Why would he send his son into this sinful world? What was his mission? And have we accepted that cross? Have we accepted that message of, uh, message of Jesus Christ? Right? We have to actually agree that this is the formula for what ails the world. We have to actually agree that Christ and him crucified is the answer. We have to actually agree that holiness is the way that we have been set apart by God. Not to just talk a certain way, but to live a certain way that is in line with scripture so the world can see. You know, this story goes back. I won't labor with you. Uh, too much on this but if you go back to Israel's story they had an evangelistic message 
given to them by God through Moses, right? Certainly through the prophets, to live a certain way amongst the heathen nations, to live amongst those who had no law, had no principles, had no religious structure. Their evangelistic call at that time was to not mix with the world. Don't mix. God specifically told them to be sanctified, to be set apart. Don't blend in with that. You live under this mosaic legal system here. Right? It's tenuous as it was. Live under this when you get over into the promised land. Don't mix in with those other nations. Don't uh, uh, serve these other gods that you didn't know, who never brought you anywhere, who never taught you, who never fed you, who never clothed you. Don't ascribe to these gods. That was the evangelistic message. And we know they failed, right? So if we are not going to adhere to the principles even through this prayer, right? If the disciples chose not to do this, how would they be unified and how would they be effective in the world? Uh, keep in mind, Jesus is praying, <laughs> you know, that they uh, 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 not be taken out of the world, so they're going to be left in it. The least they could do is come together, right? Because they're all going to be combating the same thing, which is a world that hates them. All right, the last outline shining to intercede John chapter 17 verses 22 through 24 Jesus is still talking verse 22 from the NIV I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one I in them and you in me so that they may be brought into complete unity then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. I want to pause right here. This is huge. If we do this under the banner of Christ's prayer, this is what, should, this is what informs us, right? This should inform us. If we do this as Christ laid it out, doesn't say we won't have problems but we have to be on the road to unity we have to be on the road to uh, 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 unifying ourselves under the banner and under the gospel of Jesus Christ right so we complete this thing right we can be uh, mature in this thing not as Ephesians would talk about uh, being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We got to be settled in this thing. It has to be made up uh, 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 in your mind that this, hey, this is the way. Jesus said, I am the way. There, 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 there's no cloud in that, right? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. That There is no, there is no dust in that message. He says, I am the way. Right, John chapter 14, right? He says here in this prayer, uh, uh, desi he desires some things, right? He's prayed about this thing. And we should be praying about these things, that we come together, uh, not in, under a, a, a separate agenda, but a, under one agenda. He said, then the world, right? <laughs> will know right if we if if we came together the world would get it the world would understand the world would appreciate the fact of what we're saying if we were all on the same page but we send the world mixed signals some of us are going to do it this way some of us are going to do it that way and the world is looking at us saying I don't want even either one of them I want to actually go this way. So we got all of these different directions. And these are doctrinal matters, right? Belief systems where people have rested in. 
and we cannot move them from a place of error without the truth right this is something the gospel uh, uh, the epistles of John was dealing with right because there are other things being taught and I don't want us to believe or and I'm not certainly uh, uh, indicating that we're not making progress but we can always do better certainly through prayer we haven't arrived we haven't graduated right but we need to be on the path of unity so the world can get this thing there are still people who are not saved right and we don't need to tackle it by ourselves we need to tackle it with one another we need to tackle it with other churches right we need to come together and see that we have a universal we have a global problem of sinful people who have not given their lives to Christ and if we don't come together to affect that change you see what I mean then we won't be able to get those people that Christ is endeavoring for us to make impact in their lives verse 25 Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. So as we step back and we look at what Christ wants, ultimately, right, he wants us to be with him all believers that is our prayer today that is our hope today uh, this involved uh, this uh, this last petition if you will that in that's in verse 20 that believers might be with him in heaven to behold and to share his glory right this involved the security and assured eternal felicity of all who are his. In other words, we'll ultimately get to a state of eternal happiness. This is the goal, right? On the other side of the world hating us and our discomfort in this world is an eternal state of happiness, right? I, I feel the same way as you do. I understand the plight of living in a sinful world, right? Doing our best to uh, 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 to live in it and be a part of it, or, or to be uh, uh, not a part of it, right? But we should do our best because there are some goals in this prayer that Christ is prayed about, and I hope trust and pray that I have given you something to think about today I want to leave you with a doxology that's uh, found in Romans chapter 11 verses 33 through 36 this will help in your study of this lesson I also want to give you Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 through 5 this will also help um, in your study of this lesson but I hope, trust, and pray as we think about this prayer that we would align ourselves and our prayers with what the Father wants. Not in some situations, but in all situations. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Father, we thank you for your word. It is true. We thank you for this example, this pattern this model prayer if you will this accounting of Jesus uh, renderings in his prayer petitions that he gave full account of his time on earth and he thought enough of his disciples to pray for them and he looked down through generations and and thought enough to pray for others who would ultimately believe in the message and somehow even today we have gotten caught up in the fact that we have been saved because of that message today we believe father that he had us in mind when he was praying about 
other believers. And we have, as we lift up this petition today, we have other people in our hearts and minds today. Other believers who are struggling, other believers who need your strength and power and even a, a broader understanding of what you have purpose for their lives. Father, I just thank you for what you're doing. We can see your handiwork all over our lives. We are not the same. We can see that we have been sanctified even the more. Each and every day something old about us is dying off while we take on more the image of Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for your, your purposes and plans for our lives today and for each and every one under the sound of my voice today. To God be the glory. Whatever you have purpose for their lives, your will be done. God over our lives today your will be done in this country your will be done in the new leadership your will be done oh God even in the messages that we would we would preach and teach to your people today your will be done in the circumstances that have overwhelmed us oh God we don't realize we don't understand what the next move is give us a mind and a wisdom, O oh God, that we might embrace your will, even though we, we find it to be troubling. Grant your spirit today that we might appreciate others who are going through, and we pray for those who have not accepted the message, that you would shape our tongues and our lives, that we might embrace those who need to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for who you are and that you will get the glory out of every situation, out of every life. You will not be cheated, O oh God, by the evil one out of your glory, your honor, and praise. For even Paul said all things work together for good. We realize that today everything is working together. All things are working together for the good those who love God and those who have been called according to his purposes we believe you today we love you today we call it done in Jesus name we ask and pray amen so again until such time the Lord would permit us to come together again we say God bless you